Most developers don't care or know what an LLM is. They're stuck debating about the latest JavaScript frameworks while a revolution is happening. But the last code bender is different. He realizes that AI will be the most powerful tool of our generation. So he goes all in on mastering it. And the first step to master AI is to understand what LLMs are. Young Codebenders, this is a super quick crash course on what LLMs are for busy developers who want to get rich in the AI revolution. My name is Zorbek, I'm a senior software engineer from NYC, and on this channel I teach you how you can use AI to stand out as a developer and build cool stuff. So the question that you're going to be asking is, what are LLMs? What is this magical term that everyone is using? Well, LLM stands for Large Legendary Magician. Obviously, it's not that, it stands for large language model, which is basically a type of AI that mimics human intelligence. And it doesn't really think like a human, but it tries to mimic the way humans are using statistical models based on data that it was trained on. So I'm going to explain more of that now. Since you guys are developers, we're going to use developer language. So an LLM model is basically just two files. So literally two files. If you want to run an LLM local on your computer, you just need those two files. The first file is a parameters file. So that's a file that has like billions of parameters. This is an example of Lambda 2 70B model. If you use like GPT, for example, GPT-4 has billions of parameters as well, which is just a list of like weights for the neural, neural network. And then you have a code file. And that file is just a few hundred lines long and it's there to implement the architecture of the neural network and to run it. And that's it. Once you have those two files, you can literally run any LLM on your computer. Like locally, you need your computer, your MacBook, for example, you don't need an internet connection, nothing. You just have those two files, you execute it, and then you have your LLM running, and then you can like interact with it, like ChatGPT, for example. But the question is how to get those files, right? And that's actually a very complicated process. Because to get the parameter file, it's very complicated, it takes a long time, and it takes especially a lot of money. Because what you do is essentially you're taking data from the internet, and you're taking a huge amount of data, like in terabytes, huge amount of data from the internet, and you need to figure out a way to compress it. That's the whole goal. You take a huge amount of information and you want to compress it while retaining the core like value of this information in a small zip file that someone can run on their computer. That's the goal. And so you need like just a cluster of thousands of GPUs that are running for like many days, sometimes multiple weeks. And it costs obviously millions of dollars to just get that cluster to run and then electricity costs and, and stuff like that. But at the end of it, the result is that you get the zip file that has uh, like those parameters that you need. And just maybe to drive the point across, I'm going to use like a Dragon Ball Z example. It's imagine when Goku tried to create the spirit bomb, he needs energy from the earth. So he needs to gather like that energy that is available there, but he needs to compress it, right? So everyone needs to give their energy, all the people, the animals, plants and everything. And as a result, he gets that spirit bomb. And obviously it's extremely powerful once he has it. Now, how do LLMs actually work? So we saw what are LLMs? what they're comprised of, that is literally just two files that implements a neural network. But now, how do they actually work? The first thing that you guys need to understand is that LLMs don't think like humans. They only try to mimic us. That's why when you use ChatGPT, don't think that ChatGPT thinks like a human. We are in the assumption that it thinks like a human because we're interacting and talking like humans. But if you understand how LLMs truly work, you can start prompting it completely differently. And I'm going to give examples for that. When I say that an LLM doesn't think like a human, this is what I mean. When you take a sentence that you give to the LLM, what it's trying to do is, is it's trying to mathematically predict what is the statistical likelihood of the next word in the sentence. So for example, if you give an LLM the sky is blue, it's going to break it down to two tokens. It notices that there is that there is three token, the sky is. So it's three words here. You give it to the LM and the LM is going to make a list of keywords that follows this. That's it. But for everyone, there is a weight. There is like a probability that this is the, the best keyword that should be in, in this sentence. The way it knows it is based on the data that it's just trained on, right? Like when you see the sentence, the sky is, the majority of the time, most of the data that is available online is gonna say the sky is blue. This means that blue, this keyword will have the highest statistical likelihood of being the word that the user is looking for. And then it completes it and it tells you the sky is blue. So you see that it's literally a mathematical problem. It's nothing to do with just the LM understanding and thinking like humans. It's literally just straight up maths and probabilities. And this means that the higher the quality of the input, it will influence the quality of the output. So if you understand how LMs are trained, it can help you prompt the LMs correctly. And I'm going to give you an example actually of this is if you ask an LM, for example, who is Conor McGregor's father? That's like a famous UFC fighter. And it's going to say, Tony McGregor, because it has data about Conor McGregor and it has data to people affiliated to him. But if you ask about 
who is Tony, Tony McGregor's son? Well, maybe he doesn't know who Tony McGregor is. So he's not going to make the connection. Whereas a human would directly know, oh, like, obviously, like, the son is called McGregor if the father is Tony McGregor, right? Like, he's going to know it. But this is the difference with LMs. LMs are not humans. They think purely mathematically based on data that it was trained on. The thing, though, is it wouldn't be as interesting if LMs were literally just summarizers of the web. Right? Like if you take terabytes of data from the web and then you summarize it and compress it into a small, like quote unquote small, like 100 gigabyte file, it will literally just be a summarizer. But what we want is we want those AIs to be assistants, right? You want to be able to have a conversation. You want to be able to ask like complex questions and you want to get interesting information, interesting answers like you would get from like a human expert who has actually assimilated all that information and can give you original creative answers. That's why we go through a step of fine tuning. So what you're going to do is once you have that base model that has been created, you want to improve it and you want to improve it by giving a series of like kind of like Q&A A's basically where you have the user is asking a question and then you have an ideal answer that is provided. This step is actually all done by humans. So step number one is done by machines. It's like a neural network that is running. But step number two is done by humans. So humans literally have to write like hundreds of thousands of conversations where it's like a question and then an ideal answer for the LLM to do. And now you're going to retrain the model based on this new data set so based on those conversations and after that you actually get an assistant now you get an assistant where you can ask questions and it's gonna give you creative answers based on the original data that it was trained on and based on the fine tuning where it's like a q a type setting q a or completions so in summary to get an lm you have to go through two stages number one is the pre-training it's done every few years just because it's expensive it costs millions of dollars it's just not an easy process you have to download terabytes of text from the internet pay millions of dollars and then you get the base model but once you have the base model it doesn't stop there then you want to fine-tune it to improve it and turn it into an assistant so what you do is you write labeling instructions for like a team of people who are going to do it and it's like hundreds of people who are maybe thousands of people who are doing this they're going to write those ideal q a style like data and then you're going to fine-tune the model based on this data that's not long it takes like a day or so and then you obtain this assistant model so assistant model is like gpt4 for example that's what's in chat gpt then you run a lot of tests you deploy it you monitor you collect like misbehaviors and then you use that data again to retrain the model to refine tune it again and then you improve it like this and that's something that can be done like every few weeks that's what ChatGPT does like they constantly improve the product based on fine tuning there are a ton of lms out there and there are more and more like this diagram actually is not even the latest there's more and more coming up like at a very frequent cadence there is also multi-model uh models which is models that are not just trained on text but also images audio and this means that they can generate a lot more things than just text right like it's for example like it's like when you use ChatGPT right now, you can provide images, right? You can provide images, there's audio functionality, and as it grows, you'll be able to do more and more things uh, with this. So multimodal is extremely interesting for the future. If you want to learn more about this, like this video is basically like a short summary of this longer video that is just genius. It's an extremely good one hour talk on what LMs are. So I highly recommend it goes into more details around like the future and like security issues like jailbreaks and problem injection. So I highly recommend it. Now the question though, that you might be asking is, all right, I know what LMs are, how do I get started, which is the essential step that you want to know, right? Like if you want to seize and be on top of this revolution, you have to start using those AI models and build stuff with them. The first thing that you're going to do is you're going to use the OpenAI API. There is no reason to go for another API at this stage if you want to just get started because OpenAI is the most popular API that exists. They created ChatGPT. They have the most popular models by far. So you want to always start with the most mainstream technology if you're just getting into a new market. So you create an OpenAI account. You get your OpenAI API key. And that key is going to give you access to the API. It doesn't cost much, honestly. Like if you just want to play around and build personal projects, it's going to cost you like $1 or $2. So it's worthwhile. So you go to the OpenAI API docs. You're going to check the chat API. You're going to look at the model. Most like it's going to be gpt4 for you you go over the parameters and then you check examples and i want you to make your first curl request so it's a request you can make through a terminal there are examples here on the chat gpt website literally make that request add your api key to it and get a result from it that will be your first interaction with the open AI api and after that what i want you to do is Take a simple project that you have, either a project that you have already built or you can literally spin up like a quick chat app, for example, and then you add OpenAI to it. You add a call to the API and that will be your very first AI project that you built. And from there, you can start going further and further, testing different APIs, building more complex projects. But that's literally the step that you can start today. You can do this in one day. Time box it. From the moment you're watching this video, literally go create an account, get your key, make a first request and 
create like a basic little app. And this is how you start your journey with AI. I believe that AI developers will just dominate the market for the years to come. So the earliest you start learning this technology, the better it is for you to stand out and just get ahead of this revolution. But always remember one thing, young contenders. For us, AI is just a tool to reach our goals. It's not an end. AI and code are tools to reach our goals, to generate wealth, to build cool stuff and to create the life that we want. Now, if you want to join a private network of developers, of like ambitious AI developers who want to build cool stuff and make more money and grow in their career, I've created this private network. You can go on lastcodebender.com slash bootcamp. It's in pre-order right now. So you're going to get a special discount. You're going to get access to a lot of things in there, like regular Q&As and calls. So I highly recommend it. Now, if you want to know more about what an AI developer is, the future of the market, and why I believe it's going to be the most in-demand job of the decade, check out this video.